What is up everybody? This is Nas. And this is a code with me video. Where we're gonna be coding some things. We're gonna be working on the 3JS website. Gonna be having a ton of fun around that. Uh the goal here is honestly just to learn. To learn for you, to learn for me, to learn for Daniel, and for everybody else. <laughs> We've got some chill songs in the background playing. Um and yeah. Anyways. We've got Daniel up in here. What's up, Daniel? Hey, everyone. It's going to be sick. <laughs> I'm pumped for this because I've been playing around with uh, a lot of 3JS stuff. So I think it's going to be a, it's gonna be a fun one for you. Yeah, so I think uh, the three, yeah, 3JS I'm excited about because those of you who don't know what 3JS is, it's pretty much for like building 3D websites. And yeah. the coolest 3D website I think I can, I can probably think of. What is the coolest 3D website that we know? What is that called? The one I think is personally one of the coolest is this uh, portfolio from the guy I'm learning, Bruno Simon. Uh, yeah, his portfolio, right? The Bruno Simon portfolio one, right? Yes, and that's the one where you could like you drive with a car and here I'll yeah. sh I'll share the link with you and um. Bruno see. Simon. No, not this. That's one. A, this that one. one. Yeah, that one. This one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's gonna load. Oh, we got people in the chat. Oh, dang. Where are you guys no at? No way. Nice. <laughs> We're seeing people in the chat already. Yeah, hopefully you guys can hear the music in the background, right? I think the... Yeah. Can you hear it, Daniel? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I hear it really good. Okay, great. Um. Anyway, so, yeah, I have the start button right here. Look at this. this. Boom. Wee. Wee. Oh. What's so cool about this portfolio, he incorporates a little bit of everything that he's teaching in his course, which ranges from physics yeah. to like car movement to like things around textures and like say if you hit those bricks on the, like those bricks right there that are standing up, it'll which actually one? they'll fall like those bricks right in front of you. Whoa, dude, this is such a dope website. Like who would yeah. thought to make like a full on a website like this? You know what I mean? Like it's like... The Look, his coding? projects over right here. Right. It's yeah. Those are some of his projects. So like three GS Journey, which is his course, and then Madbox, which is it's just a really cool website. And there's just so many different ways of building all sorts of different things with three GS. And this is just like one example of the many different things you can build with. Wow. It. Yeah. Hello, Georgie. It's Hello, Ernest. What's up, Dimitri? Good to see you guys. Dude, this is so good. Like, I don't know if we'll be able to get to this kind of a point. <laughs> Or like how long it will take us to get something like this? <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? Man. No, it's funny. Like I've been learning a lot of stuff to where like I think I could look at because right now I'm learning how to do physics stuff, so I could start yeah. looking, learning how to like build something like this in the future. Really? Like because it looks complicated, but once you start like piecing things together and experimenting with stuff, which comes with time, right. like building things like this is like not what? What's easy, the boost but... function? What's the boost function? Do you know? Uh, the shift, press the shift key when you're driving. So, <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I've done it successfully where you line it up straight, you could hit it, and it'll go straight through the the goalpost. Oh, that's some weird physics right there. Yeah, yeah, like it's like some of it's definitely a lot more playful. And then, um, yeah, you ready? Like, ready? You, you think I can make stuff? it? Do you think Good. I'll make it? Do you think I'll make you it? Do it. If you hit the shift, and oh yeah! <laughs> oh, that was See? perfect. Uh, oh damn! I did a backflip. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> Dude, this is too good. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, awesome. we're here to learn. We're here to learn this. Oh damn! Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, that's hilarious. But it's so, a, it's an awesome piece. Anyways, I guess let's go ahead and try to build something. I mean, we're not going to build anything like this, of course. But <laughs> what I will say, though, is that we're going to start for something really simple. Again, yeah. if you want to code this with us, you're, you're welcome to. Um, I think, let me see here. We have, we're using a 3JS docs right here, correct? This 3JS docs. So if yeah. you want yeah. to follow along, I'll, I'll put it here in the comments section. Uh-huh. Um, there we go. Yeah. Right. Also, we're going to be sharing this code space so you guys can actually see us coding this live. 
killed Sandbox, man. It's just gotten so powerful. Dude, it's insane. So I'm yeah. going to go ahead and give this to you guys. This link to the code Sandbox. Boom. So you can actually go here. You just... Only me and Daniel can edit this, but you guys can watch it. There we go. Yep. So let's just title yeah. this. I don't know. What is the the point of it? It's like a 3JS basic box, right? Yeah, cube. If you want to keep it like shorter, like 3JS cube, basic cube. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna try to make this as big as possible so everybody can see kind of, you know. Can I make this to, can I push it to the left side? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. I think it's just it's no. just built the way it is that way. Yeah, it'd be cool if they make it like a, a menu, like a hamburger menu. Yeah. That cool. uh, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Valid. Okay. Sweet. <sighs> okay. So before we start, basically, we need to go through an installation guide. So we need to install yep. three, right? Yep. So yeah. Yeah. Should do the, the first. Yeah. So go to. We're gonna need to go to where. Go uh, go to the explorer, then you see add dependency. Search yeah, type three, three and the very top one. Yeah, and then boom, just adds it like that, and it's gonna reload the sandbox to include that new dependency. Oh, that's good. Nice. Yeah. And okay. now that you have that, then we could literally just do it how they're doing it right here, which is like a, actually a good starting point for every uh -huh. time you create a three JS pro project. You always make sure to find a scene. Okay, so let's. So first things first. Looks yeah. like we need to do is need to import three. Right? That's part one, correct? Yes, so let's hundred percent. Code yes, here. Yeah. So the source. I think it's in a source folder. Source folder. Yeah. yeah if you go back to the Fox Explorer. Ah, uh, there it is. Loaded, but we yeah, index index yes, That's where we need to put it right there, right? Yeah, exactly. So and you can probably let's get see. rid of that inner HTML, which. Just, yeah, we don't need this one right now. We don't really need that, right? Yeah, we don't need that. That's just to show you how you could. Yeah. I guess as an example. Let's see. Do you have any yeah. problems? I don't think three is defined but never used. Okay, so it looks like it's defined but it's never used. Below. So it looks like we're good on the three side in that yeah. case. It's yeah. literally just the same VS Code errors letting you know that you haven't yeah. used that. So let's create a scene it. here. So scene. Yeah. So everything I'm guessing starts out with a scene, correct? Yeah. So the scene is basically what holds all the objects and basically all the geometries and stuff that you create in 3GS. It's basically what you can see. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Let's see here. Okay. So then, and this is an, oh, there's a scene, there's a camera. So there's a viewpoint, right? I'm, I'm guessing exactly. from my understanding. So there's the scene, which has all of our objects and the camera, which we can uh -huh. change how our perspective and how we look at it. So yeah, the camera is key for being able to actually see the, the scene. Uh-huh. And then if you get specifics about parameters that 75 is the field uh -huh. of view which this one? is like the, yeah so that's the angle at which the camera is set to look at it okay and it uses a perspective camera which mm -hmm. is like how our eyes work so there's a so there's a field of view where uh -huh. we got objects that get close at a certain point and we can only see objects at a, to a certain distance and things will kind of like render out but yeah so it kind of looks at it like um like from our eyes is how a perspective camera works okay interesting okay and of course i'm guessing this is the so uh, i mean i have to i have to look into what these actual numbers mean yeah so i still don't necessarily understand those but what i'll say here is we then we create the render here so we do yep. const render boom mm -hmm. that nice oh look that formatted for us very nicely yeah, it's it's clean, and the render is what actually loads everything. The whole thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Render so that do... set size. Gotcha. So let me do render that set size. So window dot in. Okay, that makes sense. So basically, we're rendering for the whole screen, correct? Yep. Exactly. That's that's how it works. Yeah. And then I think there's one more thing, which this render comes with the canvas, where you actually, if you want to be able to see. It, you have to append it to the to the DOM to the HTML. Oh, you what do you mean you have to append to the DOM? Which is what we're doing yeah. right here, correct? Yeah, yeah. That's actually gonna add that renderer, which has a canvas attached to it, and it'll it'll basically load everything in. Which we're not gonna okay. see anything yet, of course, because we haven't actually created a uh, in a geometry like a cube yet. So okay. it's just gonna be blank, which is what is what is good. So which just is fine, yeah, yeah, yeah which is fine, which is fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely makes sense. 
and okay, let's take a moment to explain right here yeah yeah let's take a moment to explain what's going on here we have to set up a scene our camera the render the first attribute ah so the first attribute is the field of view basically yeah which is this yes. one field of mm -hmm. view is the extent of the scene that is seen on the display at any given moment the values in the grease i don't exactly know what that means then we have an aspect well, ratio. Like field of view is yeah. I'll 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 grab a visual to make it make more sense. But like the field of view is like how far out you can see. Think of it like your eyes. Like how far uh -huh. out can you see from your left to your right until things oh, are visible? Oh, so like ah, oh, so like so it's like seventy five degrees or like one eighty degrees or like three sixty. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Ah, oh, that makes sense. That... Until you turn your head to be able yeah. to see that. That makes sense. That's how it works. The second one is the aspect ratio. That one makes sense to me too. The next attribute are the near and far clipping plane. So that's basically when, what that means is the objects further away from the camera than the value far are closer than near won't be rendered. Uh, you don't you have to worry about this now, but you may want to use the other values in your apps to get better performance. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Next up is the renders. That makes sense. We also need to set the size of the render. Yep. It's a good idea to use the width and the height of the area where you want to fill up with our app. In this case, the width and the height of the browser window. Yeah. Yeah. For performance intensive apps, you can also give set size smaller set of values like window inner width divided by two. Uh huh. To make it smaller, pretty much. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, if you want to make a smaller rendered canvas, then of course you could do that. But if you say you want to make a full screen, then you use the window dot like inner width and all that to get the full screen. Like, got it. Got look. it. Got it. Got it. If you were to keep the size of your app by rendered at a low resolution, you can do so by calling set size with false as update style. Wait, what? So like if you want the render the if you want the basically the basically the scene rendering at a lower resolution just for mm -hmm. performance, mm -hmm. there's a a third parameter you could pass into set size, mm -hmm. which you just pass in false. So it'll mm -hmm. render it in at a mm -hmm. at a lower resolution, but still taking up 100 percent of the width or height mm. depending on whatever you said it. so it's like if the computer's slow for example correct yeah so the, it's good yeah. it's like a performance performance check if you're okay with losing some quality yeah and then last but not least we add the render element to our html document ah we don't have the canvas element yet mm -hmm. but that little that thing where you if you went, go back to the code if you see render a dot dom element so dom mm -hmm. element is actually a canvas mm -hmm. that the renderer creates we can use mm -hmm. a custom canvas if we want but this mm -hmm. is another way of approaching it as well but you may want a custom canvas if you want to have more control over that canvas than what the renderer okay is. so don't really need this yeah. part this no, part don't not, really necessarily. Need. not at all because it just appends it to the body so it's not gonna but of course you could change it to append it to the div instead but that's like extra mm -hmm. if you want more control but um yeah makes sense okay that's all good about yeah. where's the cube you promised let's add it now <laughs> yeah okay so we need we create a box geometry yeah okay i'll do it right now so that's in, gonna be inside inside js yep with and the I think it, oh i can yeah i think do i have to do inside here like under after the scene i'm guessing as long as you do it before you define the renderer. So ah, like, really? Or actually, no. Keep going. I think you. I think you're good. So, I think I'm good, right? You're good, yeah. yeah, you're good. I just realized something until we actually add the renderer. It like actually render yeah. it because right now yeah, we yeah. just we just set it up, so we have actually haven't rendered anything in yet. Yeah. Then we have material. So, so const material yeah. is equal to. Ah, so mesh basic material. So that's the color basic yeah. that we're going to do. That's going to be added to this, yeah. right? So the materials where we could define like the texture, the color, yeah. things like that. This is where we actually give the geometry, which defines the shape, mm -hmm. like style and look. And then we got the cube. So this is three that mesh. So yes. ah, and, and that takes both the geometry and the material. Yeah. And all it does, it, it just applies them together so applies the mesh to the geometry to give us that nice cube all right and then and then it adds to the scene so we do scene yeah. that add so that's the cube. so scene is right here so then yeah. we do scene that add cube mm -hmm. yeah whenever you define a new mesh you always add it to the scene if you want it to actually then we do built. camera position that z equal to five 
And the reason why you set the Z position is because the scene and the camera are load are loaded at the same center point. So you're mm -hmm. not going to actually be able to see anything because the camera is like right on top of the scene. So obviously you can't see mm -hmm. anything. So you have to pull it back, which is why they do that dot Z because you're pulling it towards us. The camera is going nice. to get pulled towards us so we can see the scene in front of it. So question is, question is, yeah. it, was, it, says, it says multiple instances of 3GS being imported. That's weird. Mm. Do I need to what remove this one? Do you think it's, no, it's impossible. No, it should. No, no. The way, the way you're doing it is exactly how you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not showing up still. Well, that's fine. Which it's because we haven't actually rendered anything in yet. Oh, which, we did right here, you know, no? Okay. Go back to create the scene. Oh, no. Let me do that. Ah, it says, ah, so yeah. you do actually need to animate it. Okay, I see. Yeah. So, okay. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, before we do the animation, if you want to render it in, just uh -huh. uh, go back to the code. Yeah. Let's see. And under the under the camera dot position dot z so uh, under line twenty six just right mm -hmm. under it, mm -hmm. just the type renderer so the variable that has you, know, render. you, can, you, you can also type by the way I don't know if you know that you can also type oh duh I just I forgot about that part but um, <laughs> I totally got, forgot so it's like this oh wait is it it says I don't have access to write in that one. Did you give me access to write in just a uh, let me double specific check in here. file? Let me see here. Editors. Oh, oh, no. No, now you should be okay. able to. Okay, cool. Okay, so what we do here is we... So that variable render, which where we define the renderer, we do mm -hmm. dot render. And what we pass in is the scene we want to render. And then, of course, uh -huh. the camera. Ah, uh, oh. Oh, interesting. So we do a renderer, the uh, render, the scene, and then the camera. Ah, yeah. So you, we basically we create the scene, we create the camera, and then yeah. that's what we render. Yeah, camera and scene are separate. We use the camera to be able to see the scene. Interesting. Like, yeah. Interesting. And now that we can see it, a lot of the code that we're that you're writing is going to make a lot more sense. Like, say for example, if you get rid of camera position Z. Uh huh. You see, you can't ah. see it, right? And that's because so Z is the top. We're in the so see, so right now we're in the center. So it's no, like, the, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the Z is the axis that comes towards us. So like this, the Y is up. The Y is the up. X is left. The X is horizontal. Yeah. And then the Z is what gives us that three D effect. Ah, so it's like the do. zoom in and the zoom out, correct? Exactly. Yeah comes uh -huh. towards us and then when you do z equals five we're actually positive it's gonna pull the camera towards us so it pulls it away from the center of the scene uh -huh. so now that we can see our and if cube, we do ne negative you're, you're actually going forward in the scene so you're you're never gonna see the cube ah i see ah but this is further this right here is further so now we now we do yeah. like so like 15 for example so you're gonna keep going farther and farther further and further and yeah, as you increase that Z. Interesting. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, so it's interesting. Five here. So let's and create the animation section here. So we need, so that makes sense. Okay. So the one thing, so when we create the box challenge is one, one, one. Yes. Okay. So that, those are the, I think the width, height, and depth. So uh -huh. the numbers. Ah, so width, the width, height, and depth. Uh-huh. There really isn't a unit of measurement in 3ds so like one 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 could mean anything that we wanted to depending mm -hmm. on like how we want to size things we could treat so, like one unit as like one meter and like we could treat uh, it so it's not more. right i mean that makes sense because like it's really hard to you know how do you convert that to like real life right how do you convert like centimeters exactly. to like a real life situation but mm -hmm. you could what's good especially on a large scale project is you always define what you want that unit unit of measurement to generally be so you can scale mm -hmm. things to be as accurate as possible. Got it. Makes sense. I like that. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So we got okay. We got that. Sorry, right, I'm eating my. Oh, you're not. <laughs> Gotta say, energized. So Your now we can get into the rendering. Mm. Oh, nice, nice. 
you won't be able to see anything. This is because we're not actually rendering anything yet. For that, we need what's called a render or the animate loop, okay? So, yeah. so let's the way we do it doesn't involve an animation. So mm -hmm. what we can do is we move that render.render .render into the animate. Yeah. I see now. So then we do anima animate. So the yeah. animate, I'm guessing, yeah. what is the animate for? Okay, so this... So uh, we don't have anything in here yet that's animating stuff. Okay, what? Ooh, got a problem. I need to refresh. I think. There we go. There we go. Okay, yeah. yeah so nothing's an getting animated yet, but the animation loop is running. And request animation frame is a really powerful function mm -hmm. because this uh, this animation frame function will be optimized for the user's browser to loop in. So it's like basically you're creating a loop that renders mm -hmm. in a certain number of frames based on how fast the computer can run. So it'll automatize. Oh, wow, really? That's pretty smart. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, request animation frame has a mm -hmm. lot of advantages because you would think set interval, right? Which kind of does right. the same thing. You could set, But it doesn't take into account the performance that this browser is able to handle. But request mm -hmm. animation frame is able to recognize the performance power of the browser and mm, only do a certain number of frames per second so like for me i get mm -hmm. like because i got the mac i get about 60 to 120 i get about 120 frames a sec per second because that's really max capable of. i'm curious what why by the way code sandbox keeps yeah. keeps kicking you out of the yeah that's it yeah i don't know why yeah i would honestly i wouldn't know either like we definitely is it, is it because like you're 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 is it because like you're moving away is that why i don't know why hmm. Um, maybe because I know I'm switching between like tabs and stuff, but oh, that's probably why, honestly. I think it's probably but why. It, but it could be, case. yeah, any because it thinks I'm done, but yeah, it thinks like you're done. Like, okay, time to kick you off pretty much. Okay, so we have the render, okay, so that's fine, yeah. And now we can actually add some, so we could transform this cube. This will create a loop that causes the render to draw the scene every time. The scene is refreshed. Ah, so this yeah. will, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Ew, okay, uh, on a typical screen, this means 60 times per second. Really? 60 frames per second? Wow. On average, right, yeah. You might say, why don't we just create a set interval? Thing is, we could, but the request animation frame has a number of advantages. Perhaps the most important one is that it pauses when the user navigates to another browser tab. Hence, now wasting their... Wow, that's pretty smart. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. If you insert all the code above into the file you created before it began, you should see a green box. Prioritizing it. Add the following code right above the render render call in your anime function. So, uh huh. Yeah, you want to put those above the renderer because you want those right here, changes correct? to take effect. Yeah. No, watch it. Now it Oh, rotates. damn. Let's go. Look at that, you guys. Damn. So it's, it? so it's constantly rotating, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So rotation X. So it's doing an X rotation of horizontal X constant and then Y rotation constant pretty much, right? Yep, exactly. So it's going to add add point zero 0.01 to the X, which uh -huh. rotation on the X is going to rotate it like... Because mm -hmm. mm, you're rotating on the X axis, so it's going to rotate this way. If I do it like this finger, it's going to rotate it like that way. Uh -huh, but uh -huh. on, y, on the Y axis, it's going to do it this way. Right. That makes sense. That's like, yeah, that's like combined. It looks like kind of like it looks weird. It yeah, doesn't combined, mix. Yeah. 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 It looks weird, right? But it does a mix of the two. Yeah. But if I just go X, for example. It's just going to go forward. It's going to be a forward spin. There we go. Yeah. So it's just going to be a forward spin. There we go. Like that. Mm, I was actually thinking more so it would go left and right. No? Since it's an X. Okay. So, horizontal. so actually how it works is when you do a rotation to X, you're rotating on the X axis. So you know how the X axis is horizontal? Oh, on the axis itself. Oh. You're rotating on that axis. So when you mm -hmm. do a Y, it'll do the, it'll do this one like that. You just kind of rotate mm -hmm. this way. The Z... The Z is going to do it's gonna zoom, go right? No. Bit. So like, actually, you'd be surprised. So say change it to Z, like rotation.z instead of X. 
it's gonna do a sideways i think it sh should at least yeah ah that makes sense yeah yeah it's like yeah, yeah. it's on the top yeah and all i i want to find a piece of color it'll be easier to kind of visualize what these axes look like because they have what 3 ds has is these things called helpers they kind of help you visualize things more in case things get a little confusing mm -hmm. uh let me find it it's called axes helper but it's, it's just a cool piece of code that helps you visualize the x y and z so you know exactly what they look like and where they are yeah that'd be cool that, i mean let, let's see here maybe i can pull this up here um yeah if you want three you go 3 ds yeah 3GS docs. Yeah, see where that first one, Axis Helper? That's the this exact one, one I was talking right. about. Yeah, that one. It's super easy to add where you just you literally just add those two lines of code and it will you'll see the the helper. And mm -hmm. yeah. It'll help you visualize the X, Y, and Z axis so you have a better understanding of what's going on. So let's do that actually here. Yeah, and then you just add it to the scene. So scene dot add, yeah. Scene dot add. So that's uh, right here. Yeah, you could add it right there. You could add it basically anywhere. Ah, I see now. Mm hmm. Yeah, you can't see the Z one because we're facing it directly. So yeah, it looks yeah, like you can't yeah. see it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes so much sense now. And of course, if you want the that helper to look smaller you could change that number that was passed in to be like a smaller number but um yeah ah okay i see so you see this is so this is so this is the x axis i'm guessing yep exactly yeah the red that's the text. y axis i'm guessing yep that's the y axis and the z and axis the z, that's like it's coming straight it. at us yeah, yeah coming straight, coming at, straight us. at us yeah me. makes sense yeah okay cool and it's the color of it is blue they make each one just a different color, so it makes it easier to... Okay, so, so here's the want. full code. Live example. Okay, cool. Oh, we're done? Yeah. It's oh. that simple to add, like, a like a really basic cube. We, I could, okay. we can add something else where you could actually rotate around the cube. So, like, I don't know if you see some projects where mm -hmm. you can actually use this thing called orbit control, where you can you could orbit around the scene yeah that would be cool let's do that so uh, let's see what else can we do so i guess my question is where do we find some cool exercises to do with these guys that one i'm still trying to find holy more. Like, shit that is definitely a 3d model either built in like blender or something and then they just basically imported it in yeah into 3js and you could actually manipulate things on that model in right yeah like well. for example the the pose oh, this, one, this one i think it's called like it's something to do with like morphing but like it's where you get like into crazy stuff and if you look behind the character you can see their shadow oh, that's crazy <clears throat> yeah because the light is coming through here yeah yeah it's, 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 yeah it's pretty smart on that side yeah yeah and that involves adding things like lighting and this i believe is using a uh, a, a, what's called a cube map which allows you basically it adds oh my. that cool yeah it's pretty sweet dude this is too good wow this is so good it, it, it's pretty it's pretty awesome I'm like there's like these people like i see that i'm like how do you learn to even like build something like this I'm i don't like, know it just takes so much practice and it's honestly just experimenting and trying things out like we they okay, so know. what can we try? Like, what else can we try that's pretty simple? So we've got that one. So this is pretty cool. I like that. So this is going to be our, like, I guess our first one, we can call it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see, 3GS. Let me see. Fun. Um, tutorials? We have a crash course to begin. I mean, we could potentially watch a crash course, but that could be fun. But I want to mm -hmm. do like one where it's more so like, oh, how to build a simple car with texture. What that? <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh, too. oh, that's sick. We can, yeah, we could definitely create that. No? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they use lighting. So, so this is where you get into lighting. So there's, there's things like called directional light, which emulates like 
parallel rays like the like right. the sun so it's it, yeah. it shoots out light like the sun would at us which is mm. they call it directional light there's a couple of others and um yeah and it adds a cool effect and the way the lighting works it depends on the material you use as well because only certain 3ds materials re respond to light yeah. yeah let's do let's do a new one let's do a new sandbox vanilla there we go okay i'm gonna go ahead and share this with you go live Click, okay. chat enabled uh classroom mode Okay, I'll that send this pretty to cool. you. I think. Okay, yeah, for sure. I'll send it to sure. you in Slack, by the way. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay, I'll open it up. Do you see in the browser with 3GS like playing Lego Speed? Put together some boxes, add lights to find the camera, and 3GS right now. And then I'll also give you the tutorial, by the way, for this. Well. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. It's just literally just grouping a bunch of boxes together that yeah. just use different shapes or different so, sizes to create that yeah same as before we need to import 3gs so we need to go to dependencies here yeah go away. three add that in let it install that and then we need to go ahead and import that into our javascript so let's go ahead and do that on the top boom nice and then of course we want to create our scene which we are uh seen at the bottom yep boom yeah oh. first we need to define the scene the scene is uh, as a container that contains all to the 3d objects we want to display along with the lights we're about to add a car to the Ooh. scene but first let's set up the lights the camera and the renderer so yeah, yeah. Cool now we're adding something like, yeah it'd be cool to actually like uh, create like a driving car type you know with 3js like, kind of like what he did right but on a simpler version <laughs> oh yeah like that's definitely built as a 3d model yeah and then they just he just manipulates the tires on that model uh, to make it i move. see yeah so it looks complicated but it's actually pretty simple like like really? movement like yeah, he makes it's the physics that gets a little bit more complicated but like it's, nice. it's gotcha. pretty cool like once you do some 3d model stuff you create some really cool 3ds applications with it so let's say we'll add the lights to the scene and ambient light and directional light we define both the light a color and intensity mm -hmm. oh wow so we actually create the light yes so, so ambient it's like light, sun basically right yeah no that's the directional light so ambient light basically lights up the entire area uh-huh so it, it basically it's gonna help brighten up areas which we're not gonna say yet, of course, because we haven't had the renderer and anything yet, so yeah. we're not gonna see too much right now. So yeah, so. that makes sense. And directional so, yeah. light is what is going in a specific direction. That's interesting. The fact that we have two lights. Yeah, why do we it's need, pretty why cool. Do we need two lights. So, oh, hold on a second. So it says gives a base color for our geometry, while the directional light simulates the sun ah what well, so yeah so ambient light is like a normal light that's shining while yeah. directional light is similar kind of, you know it's lighting up to, from some kind of an angle yeah. pretty much yeah so the ambient light just kind of helps brighten up the geometries and the directional yeah. light was going to actually simulate the the main light uh-huh so let's see here it's a directional light that position that position is that's a pretty far position um, yeah it. right no yeah that's a pretty far position um, so scene directional light so it's good that's a good step it's shining from a direction the position can be a bit confused so let me explain out of all, all the parallel rays we define one in particular with the, spe the, sp the specific light ray will shine from the position we define so 200 is this like 200 horizontal axis 500 up yeah so xyz yeah so 200 to the right yeah 500 up up and, and then, then 300 z 300, axis. So the, like all the way back so the light's gonna be like all very way, far far in the back and yeah. then coming straight down that makes sense makes Looks sense. crazy yeah and then it's gonna shine all, straight to the zero the center of the seat the car yeah yeah the, the default that yeah. y axis points upwards and it has the highest value of, oh really the y the y 
the Y has highest value of 500. And that means the top of our car receives the most light. Uh-huh. So it will be the brightest. Okay. The other two values defined by how much the light is being is bent along the X and Z axis. That is how much the light in the front of the side of the car will receive. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's set the camera, which we always do, right? There are two options here, specified by the cameras and orthographic cameras. So video yeah. games also use perspective camera. cameras, but we are going to use not really the graphic one to have a more minimal geometric look. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. Orthographic is a little bit different because perspective it kind of when uh -huh. perspective works so that when you get farther away the object gets smaller which is to our eyes when we move farther away from something sense. it gets smaller yeah. but orthographic mm -hmm. doesn't treat it that way objects will stay relatively the same size uh -huh. so it treats it a little different because look if you look in the image the one on the left side i believe is a perspective camera yeah and this is normal camera normal camera you can see how the distance I'll yeah. just stay relatively the same size, but yeah, yeah it makes sense. Kind of like, yeah. Okay, so for the camera, yeah. we need to define a view frustum. That's a funny name, frustum. <laughs> uh, frustum. Frustum. I think it's like the region that's uh, visible. Is I believe it's yeah, the the region in the view space that's going to be projected to the screen. So that's the region that's going to be projected to the screen. In the case yeah. of the orthographic camera, this is a box. The camera projects the 3D objects inside the box towards one of its sides because each projection line is parallel. Okay, so let's just define this. So we have the yeah. aspect ratio. So we, we talked about this before. So aspect ratio yes. camera with yeah. Yeah, there, there's no There's no such thing as field of view. So we have to define that fresh room, which is what yeah. you'll see when you define the camera. I'm curious, why is it window that inner width divided by... Ah, because that's the aspect ratio. That duh. Yeah. <laughs> of, the, of the visible screen. Yeah. 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 So that's what you should use the width, the width divided by the height, right? Like 1080 by 1920, pretty much. Exactly. Okay. So it makes the image look as clean and as accurate as possible. So that Let's ratio see. is like, it defines the look. Then we got the camera height. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So let's define that camera. So yeah, all those parameters, that's defining the front strum, basically the viewable area that the camera can render in. Mm -hmm. Camera width, the width divided by negative two, divided by two. Okay. Interesting. I don't know if I've seen that before. No. Well, let's see. I think the best thing is like to put this out and then play around the numbers and see the difference. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly how you do it. Like with 3GS is you just got to play with numbers and see how yeah. things react to certain things to understand how yeah. it works. Pretty much. Pretty much. Because, yeah, uh, I haven't used orthographic too much, but I know it's still a good camera to use. Yeah. yeah. We have to define how far each side of the frontum is from the viewpoint. We define that each, the left side is 75 units. The right plane is 75 units away from the right. That makes sense, yeah. So the left yeah. is 75. Don't represent screen pixels. The size of this render image will be defined at the render. And here, these values have an arbitrary unit, kind of what you said, right? Yeah, arbitrary, yeah. The same units to set their size and position, okay. Since we define a yeah. camera, we also need to position it, turn it in yeah. a direction. We are moving the camera by 200 units in each dimension, okay. Yeah. So I'll set up the renderer. The last piece we need to set up is the render. The render is the scene according to our camera in our browser. Yeah, Let's and then the we render. do. Yeah. Oh, they said anti alias. True. Okay. Basically, anti alias just cleans up and makes it look nicer. So, anti alias will make it a little bit less performant because it helps make the quality of the rendered in scene look nicer. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Nice. We're jacked. We got a MacBook. We yeah. got a jack computer, so we can we can t we oh, can yeah. take all this stuff. <laughs> you could be surprised. These Mac, like it can handle a lot. Like a lot of computers can handle these things pretty well. But of course, it's yeah. still good to be performant where you can, especially if it's a big, especially if you're gonna build like a game where there's a lot yeah. more dynamicness and stuff. That's where performance is gonna really matter. Yeah. I don't care about performance. Right. I only care about quality. I'm just kidding. Quality till it breaks. 
<laughs> Break oh, that. Man. This is awesome. Nice. Here we also set up the size of the canvas. That makes sense, right? So the set size, the width, in the width. So the whole width and height of. I need, I really need to remove this fucking this block, this padding right here in the body. I feel it's, like no. It's the same. It's the same crap like when you're creating just a regular website where it's because I know the browser adds like this freaking I just padding hate and it. margin. I just hate it. Padding zero yeah. and then margin zero. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly what you want. Margin. Should get rid of it. Nice. Okay. Oh. Nice. Oh, what happened there? It's that's because okay. it doesn't. It doesn't resize. Oh, look at that. See, now that's beautiful, right? That's beautiful now, right? So yeah. now, now it's now it's a fully blacked out temp situation. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it looks good now. Let's build the car now, bro. This looks so cool. And yeah, this looks sick. It's going to be a minimalistic design. So let's add a box. <laughs> How about a box? First, oh. we create a pair of wheels. Huh. Oh, go ahead. What's up? What are you saying? No, that's pretty cool. I see how they created the wheels, which they just created a rectangle that spans that whole red yeah, box. Yeah, I just realized that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. We will define a gray box that represents basically both left and right wheel. And we never see the car from below. We won't notice that instead of having a separate left and right wheel, we only have a one big box. <laughs> that's funny. Mm. We're going to need a pair of wheels both in the front and the back of car so we create a, a usable function. That makes sense. So create a wheels function right there. Let's do this. Nice, that's pretty So, sick, okay. here we, cr we create a box. So, 12 width, 12 height, depth, like I, 33, it looks like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the width is kind of like looking this way, it's like this. The height yeah. is kind of like this, and the depth is like that. So it's, it's like how far in it's going, pretty much. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. The color is the color, and then, of course, material. That makes sense. So, then that this creates the wheel. Yeah. We define a wheel as a mesh. The mesh is a combination of geometry and a material. Okay. Mm -hmm. And will present it and will represent the 3D object. The geometry exactly, defines yeah. the shape of the object. In this case we create a box by setting its dimensions along X, Y, and Z axis. Yes. Then we pass on a material that will define the appearance of our mesh. The main difference between them is that they are, they react to light. Ah. So I see. I see, I see, I see. We will use the mesh, uh, what is it? Lambert material? Okay, ah, there's, different, a di there's different materials. Yeah. Ah, this is like a flat material. This one like actually defined, like, wow. Oh, interesting. So Lambert, and then there's fog material. So Lambert um, is a material that will actually respond to light. Mm -hmm. Man, I want to dive deeper into materials for sure. Let's this one does not respond to any light at all. Look at that. Oh, basic, yeah, basic materials don't respond to light at all. It doesn't give a shit. No. So, like, Mr. So, I don't see any light. You see any light? I don't see any light. Yeah, yeah, I believe this material is similar to, like, a normal material, but actually responds to, yeah. to, like, light. Yeah. It'll react to light. It has new properties in regards to, like, lighting and stuff and how it reacts to it. And this is where you could also get into things like shadows. Yeah. And actually add shadows, which separate topic, because it's something else you have to set up. But um, yeah, Lambert's a, it's a pretty cool one as well. Yeah, so using the Lambert's Lambert material. <laughs> oh, I see right there. Mm -hmm. mm. Different shape. Okay. Let's build the rest of the car. Then in a similar way, let's create a rest of the car. We define the create car function that returns a group. This group is another container like this scene. It holds 3GS objects. It is convenient because if we want to move around the car, we can simply move around the group. Ah. Yeah. It, it just wraps all the geometry. So instead of having to change each individual position, you can just change the group, which just, it's not a geometry. It's just like a, like a wrapper that holds yeah. all the different geometries and you can just change. And it has like position property that you could change and move the car. Stuff like that. Mm, so we have Which is pretty car. sick. We have create yeah. car. There we go. Okay, the, the, but but have I shared this with you? By the way, I think I did, right? Are you in? Here? Um, I know you've shared it. I'm in there, but I don't think I have. A, oh, now you can. Add access, but now. Now you can. Okay, cool. So create the car. Okay, we need to create the group, right? Yes. I do that. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Ah, and then we create the wheels. Yeah. There's one wheel. Mm hmm So we use the create wheels function. Yep. There we go. And then we divide position. Just... Go ahead. Yep. No, I was just saying, so that back, it's going to return a mesh, so then you could actually utilize the properties it gives us access to, and then yeah. Yeah, makes sense. This is pretty sick. So X and Y, so that's basically, it goes up six X negative mm -hmm. 18. So that's the left Something of the center. But so basically you're saying it's left of the center, correct? Yes, exactly. So yeah, it's going to move up six and then move left. Left to the 18, yeah. 18, 18 units. And then we could define that unit to be whatever we want it to be. Ah, and this makes sense. So the first one goes to the left. The second one goes to the right 18 units. Yeah. So hence creating that space basically, correct? The space between the tires, and I think, I assume the next piece they're gonna create is the body of the car. Which yeah. It's gonna be I that like red that rectangle. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is the main body, I believe, right? Yeah, main, that's exactly what that looks like. So this creates a width 60, 15, 30 or something, looks like. Um, yes. And it's a mesh lumber material. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry about where it says like box buffer geometry because buffer just is a little bit more performant, but you could uh -huh. either do box buffer or box geometry. Okay. That one seems more preferable, but they achieve the same thing. Gotcha. Then this one is just going up 12. That's weird. Yeah. So it's going above, I'm guessing. Yeah. And then, and then, mm -hmm. and then that one has a car add. Maybe. Know what we can do so we could visualize it more? Let's just call the renderer. If yeah, let's do that. Oh, yeah, I like that. So let's do that. Hold on. Uh, right, right there. Yeah. So just, just do render, render, just so we can start seeing things. So, so yeah, we call. It, we just have to call that function right before uh, the create, the create car, car. Right. The create yeah, just car. call it before the render. So we need to. Hold on, we need to return the car here. Yeah, car. Yeah. Okay. And then, so then we say const. Uh, I no, not not const is a let, right? Um, uh, no, we just call oh, it. No, const we car. Okay. Const car is equal to what? Uh, create car, right? Yeah. Oh yeah yeah, and then looks. And oh, then we're scene add dot add. Let's see. Just make sure. Go. Oh, look at that. Nice, that looks actually really good. <laughs> that looks interesting, huh? Yeah, that's that's cool. It's just literally just geometries mashing into each other. Yeah. Look nice. here. If we go, go. Hey, let's move this box up. Look. So this box. Mm, yeah, you can move it up. If I do a 19, it'll go up, right? Yeah, oh, yeah I see yeah, that yeah. goes up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If I do like 10, it will go down, but there we go. So now yeah, we got like exactly. fucking low wheels, you know? This is like low yeah. wheels. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we love low it, riding. It. Uh, that looks good. That looks mm -hmm. really good. Okay, that's cool. I like that. Okay. Let's then see what let's else. Let's see what else. Yeah. Now I want to create the... Oh, the cabin. I believe, right? Because yeah, the, the only thing that's yeah. left here is the... This cabin right Cab here. Yeah, and then uh, I think they add windows, which uh, we'll see if they add them. But we can add them ourselves as well. So we do const cabin. Yep. There we go. So that's after this one. Yep. Cabin. Three mesh again, 33. But it's so funny. How did you, how, like, do you just play on the numbers to figure out actually, like, which, you know, what works, what doesn't work? Yeah. Oh, I'll show you a really cool thing that's on that Bruno Simon one, which can be a mm -hmm. very powerful debugging tool and it'll make positioning and changing things so much more simpler instead really? of having to go back to code like every time to change the Oh, that's the value. gonna be so good. That's so good. Yeah. Make car add and then of course we do it at cabin. Cabin, yeah. There's Damn. our cabin, baby. Sick, dude. Love it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that looks really good. It's it's simple too. Just we're just and I like how the light geometry. really does look. Look, you see how the light here is more compared to like here. There's a shadow here. You see that? 
that's like, how that's sh- because of how it's positioned yeah wow that's so, so it's cool position where the where like the camera's position is coming straight down at it like that mm-hmm. and it creates those shadows because it's those lights more above mm-hmm. it's not so much going to be hitting like the x and yeah stuff like that. That, no that, that definitely makes sense that definitely makes sense honestly yeah. um okay so we generate two pair pairs that, that makes sense like this at the cabin nice oh how to add texture oh. to the car oh they're gonna show how to add, actually add textures oh bro let's go Oh, so that's just a texture that wraps that geometry. That's sick. Okay. You th- what do you mean by that? Oh, uh, I so you'll see um if, once we read through it because what they're saying is the texture. Because I was thinking of you a know. different way of adding those windows. Yeah. So let's add some textures to, to the cabin. We are going to paint the windows. We'll define a texture for the sides. Uh, and one of the, one for the front and the back of the cabin. So sides and then nice. front and back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Now we set up the appearance of mesh with a material setting. A color is not the only option. We can also map a texture. We can provide the same texture for every side, or, or we can provide a material yeah. for your side of an array. Mm, interesting. Oh, so there's actually five sides. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Yeah, texture are what? just I- images. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So textures from like to me, like from what I've used, I definitely have to get more experience with it are like images when you just mm-hmm. were able to wrap those geometries with that image, which defines the texture, which basically gives it more style and a interesting. Cool okay. And if you, um, yeah, you read through that, it kind of explains how it does it. 3GS uses WebGL under the hood to render 3D objects into an image and displays the final result. Okay. That makes sense. So let's just do that. So first we define the width and the height of the canvas. The size here doesn't redefine how big the canvas will appear. It more like okay, so so let's just create a function here. So you wanna you wanna type it out now? Mm-hmm. Since since it's just been me pretty much. If you want you can type yeah, it out. Sure. I'll I'll Maybe. just follow you along. Let me get that example that code back up. I know you shared the link with me. There we go. Yeah, you have to just like so scroll to the bottom. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how they do it because this is interesting. First, we define the width and height of the canvas. So it's more like the resolution, the texture will be stretched to the side of the box regardless of its size. So it'll always like fit the shape, and it might lead into a little bit of stretchiness, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. So create the so, element, so oh, so we create an element separately, really? Yeah, from the looks of it. Let me get this over here more. Okay, perfect. So, car, you in? element canvas. Oh yeah, yeah, we're, I'm good. So we get the car front texture, which I'll add it. I'll add it above the render, like right around here. Function. Mm-hmm. The car front texture. So it looks like we're creating the front texture. Mm-hmm. texture. Get car front texture. So that one. Let's see this right here. So we create the element. Yeah. Yeah, we the create canvas. the element. Front mm-hmm. canvas. Mm-hmm. Human dot create element. This is interesting. I haven't seen a ca- uh, a texture built this way before. Yeah, I'm curious. Why do they yeah, do that? What do you think? Yeah, me too. Um, maybe it's a way of writing an, a unique way of writing onto the um. Oh, a canvas texture. So it's basically allows us to use canvas, basically create a, a texture inside of a separate canvas. And then we just map that canvas onto the geometry, I assume, which mm. creates a texture on it, which is interesting. interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Okay, okay, so and we then do- we got a height. We got to give it a height. So we're, we're basically 64. defining the basic canvas. Height is 32, and width is 64. Con- context. So we're basically defining... Uh, how we want to interact with the canvas. So if we want to do it in a 2D environment or a 3D environment. So I, mm-hmm. I think that's how 3GS works. It's like it uses like a 3D context under the hood, but we're using 2D in this situation because mm-hmm. 
a texture is just like a flat image it's not like a 3d thing so it's it's just really 2d which makes sense why they're using a 2d yeah. context no it makes sense and then, and then we fill think, and then we fill that yeah with a color yeah, of white yeah so that's going to be the white that wraps the cabin so it's going to be the same color as the cabin and then the this gray i believe is what creates the that front window right here oh really yeah ah so it's gonna go around oh that's that's weird and then we return and we grab the texture and then we're gonna probably map this texture which you'll see what actually i should move this above the, above the i what? believe above the create car because this is where we define the cabin and we need to make sure i define that above so we can actually access that function okay that's Still. fine First, we're going to fill the whole canvas of right rectangles to do so. First, we set the style to be uh, white, and then we fill a rectangle by setting its top left position and its size. We draw on a canvas, blah, blah, blah. then we fill a gray color. This one starts at a, a coordinate and doesn't fill the canvas, it only paints the windows. So, yeah, so it basically creates a white rectangle, and then it puts that gray window on top of that triangle to create that like window. And we just convert it into a texture. This, this makes no like, sense, though. Like, what is this for? So what? So fill rectangle, zero zero. So that fills the whole the whole canvas. I, I know that makes sense. But then we're yeah. filling another canvas, eight 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 four eight. That, that, I don't understand what that means. Oh wait, okay. So white rectangle. So I actually I think I do get what it, I think it's saying. So we're basically fill style. So the context or basically the basic canvas, the whole thing is going to be white. Yeah. And then context that fill rect, I believe sets it initially at, so zero, zero is the coordinates. So the top left coordinates. Yeah. And then I believe. And that's the, and that's the, the top left. and then, and that's the right coordinates. So, to, so, so top left, yeah. bottom right coordinates basically. Yeah. So this which is makes sense. At the center. Is, yeah. Which makes sense. Sixty-four, thirty-two. Which definitely makes sense. Yeah. So this is creating. So these. So this is that fill rec is creating one rectangle. So this is in two D. So oh, it's a little bit yo, different. Oh, yo, Nigel. Yeah, nice. Nigel just gave us a super chat of two dollars. Let's go. Sick. He says Let's go. He, wants us, need that. he says he wants us to build the or Bitcoin ordinals NFT collection. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> okay we can look into it why not yeah that would be bad oh man i know it's a little bit more complicated i gotta look into the standard a little bit more but that would be interesting to look into in the in the future for sure because bitcoin ordinals are doing pretty well yeah no they're doing a really good job yeah if, oh, yeah, but if you have suggestions for us what else we can build for you with you guys uh round web 3 stuff pretty soon we're gonna be teaching you guys how to build this if you don't know what this is this is oh, a yeah. Web3 defense that we have put together that Daniel has mm -hmm. been crushing. Where you can actually, there's music behind this. You can actually play as a guest. It actually selects your character. And this is actually using MetaMask as well. So if I can, I can actually connect to a MetaMask account. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I have to connect to MetaMask then. Oh. Yeah, when you click connect, it should show the, it should you show the loading. Do I got bomb? Yeah. There we go. Out to refresh, I think. Mabel, connect. There we go. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. You can create, create your NFTs. You can get NFTs. Create your NFTs. Pretty cool. And they can actually play, let's just say, as an NFT. Or you can create your own with, with, with AI. Yeah, with AI, yeah. and then um, yeah. Nigel's Generate. like, Nigel's like, NFTs are dead now. Ethan NFTs are dead now. I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I don't think they're fully dead. No. Okay, I don't think they're fully dead. Because if you look at OpenSea, there's still some good, you know, how do I say, volume going on, but it's definitely not as much as what it used to be. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say Bitcoin NFTs are like necessarily thriving either, but like they're still, they're still going. People are still creating stuff on uh bitcoin as well yeah. i know the the bet i don't know if you've heard the they they kind of almost have like their 
like kind of like what's ERC twenty? I think it's called BEP twenty or something like that. It's uh -huh, not really a uh -huh. fungible token. It's like yeah. a mix of a fungible token and a fucking uh, like a regular NFT. It's it's kind of weird how that standard works, but um, there's yeah, there's there's definitely some activity going on on. But Bitcoin look at this. Look at this though. Look at this, well, Daniel. Do you see this? Are you looking at this? Look at this. This is the it's, it's trading so val ETH volume <laughs> on OpenSea. <laughs> Because like, everyone's on. Uh, this is so sad. This is so sad. Blur. There we go. I don't know why Blur was skipping my mind. You think Blur is only more right now? In terms of trading, oh yeah, trading is. I think it's gonna be way larger in terms of numbers really? than OpenSea. Yeah, because Blur is like what's built for traders. There's not as many creators, to be honest. I honestly, like, I kind of agree with them. Like, NFTs are really quiet right now. And it's just that. No, it's really, su it's super quiet. Yeah. It's, it's super quiet. quiet. I think it just, yeah. I think there's, yeah. there's going to be, there has to be an, either a next generation of NFTs uh, in general that's going to have to come along. Uh, I yeah. don't think Bitcoin is the answer, though, Nigel. Uh, I'm going to tell you this no. up front. I don't think Bitcoin is the answer to NFTs. If, if anything, Bitcoin's just gonna. It's just. It's just. It's a. I believe it's a fad. Honestly, uh, call me whatever you like, want, but uh, because Bitcoin is not made to be traded with NFTs, yeah. it's not made for that. Like, if you're trying, like the whole point of NFTs is so you, so that you can add vo value to it through mm -hmm. things like, you know. Um, it, yeah, through value, through things like, you know, game, making sure that, uh, you know, like, for example, the whole point of, I would say, Ethereum is the fact that you can use it as, as an API, you know, uh, yeah. you can check, hey, who's owner of this NFT, you can do all those checks, and Bitcoin is just not made for that, it's, it's, it's 10 times slower than Ethereum even, right, um, not just like, but for no, when you, for, you, you, you dominate, it's, the reason uh, I know, like, the reason why I don't think there's a ton of them out there right now, and the reason why, because the tech behind it is really difficult to actually push it to Bitcoin, and yeah, also because it's expensive. It really like, it's expensive yeah. to push it to Bitcoin. It's expensive to mint on Bitcoin. It's extremely expensive. It's not made for that yeah. again, right? So, um, yeah. So. I will, I will, we, we can take a look to see how we can work potentially, but no promises on that side, yes. honestly. It's just, if I were you, I would rather look into something more like Polygon or, um, you know, yeah, I would rather, rather, rather focus on the value of the project versus, you know, trying to go with the trend of, okay, Bitcoin is now pot, let me go into that side. I would instead of that, I would focus on hey, what value can I provide that's that's not there in the system, basically. Nice. Um, but yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. it's cool. I like the innovation, but like I know it's not as straightforward and as simple as what ETH has been able to provide. Even though I yeah. know it has been pretty quiet, but um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so before we, because I think the next steps they're gonna show you how to create the other textures, but I want to actually apply this texture first and see what it yeah. looks like before we jump to the next one. So let's do I that. Think I need a. It's, I don't know why it keeps um, uh, bumping Kicking me you out. The editor. Yeah, it, I didn't really switch. I switched tab for a second, but I just gotta keep it on this one. Maybe it won't happen again. Okay, so first things first is we're gonna get the car. On car front. Our front texture. Where are you typing? Hold on. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I'm in the in the create car function, and then uh -huh. we're doing. Get so we get, you're saying we get the texture front. here. Get yeah. car and front then, texture. Yeah, exactly. And then let me see how they do it here in this one. So we get the texture from this function right there. Okay. Oh. Oh wow! They create a bunch of materials. Okay. Cause I forget you can layer materials in this, but oh, it's yeah. So we create and then we connect it to a box here. Here, yeah. yeah. So look. Oh, so we have front texture, back texture, yeah. right side texture, and then left side texture right there. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you like how how you combine those textures because you can only define one map per material. So uh -huh. if you notice that that code, you see they create a but because you can layer materials onto one geometry. 
uh-huh. and you can see where they if you scroll further down you can see they create a bunch of materials stored in an array and they just layer them all together which is really crazy holy shit let car sites the center new three Oh, because I think it uses the same side texture as the right side, but we have uh -huh. to, they have to flip it to be actually on the left side. So they do some they do some transformation. Oh, interesting. Stuff that flip. This y is insane, is man. Holy shit! I'm just gonna look at this. Like, this is a, this is just yeah. yeah. Before we but do let, that, let, we'll keep yeah. it simple. Yeah, let's keep it simple. I think for now, yeah. So so we get the car front. So if you just want to do one texture, so where this color is, usually yeah. when you have a map, we don't want the color. Mm -hmm. So we remove color and we replace it with something called map. And then we just pass in the texture you want. So car front texture. All work? Oh, I see. I see. I see. And so it's going to put a texture on every single side, basically. Oh, interesting how it adds it right there. Yeah. Color. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Car front uh, texture someone texture. said rinky b testnet died yes we get testnet oh, yeah. died uh, i would say use either gorelli um uh, use either gorelli or uh i would say my suggestion is use mumbai polygon that's my suggestion yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 i would say mumbai polygon so mumbai mumbai polygon Polygon is going to be, yeah, I think, because it's going to be 10 times cheaper for you guys, and it's going to be a lot faster, and also getting t the test, the faucet for Mumbai is 10 times easier. And also deploying to Mumbai is just as easy as deploying to Guerrilla. So honestly, don't don't even screw around with Guerrilla. Just like, fuck Guerrilla. <laughs> yeah. Because Guerrilla is going to go away as well. <laughs> like, Sepolia is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to be the one to actually overrun Guerrilla. That's the crazy part. But OpenSea yeah. still does not support Guerli. Like it's 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 so screwed up. You know what I mean? Either use Sepolia or even probably better because it's EVM. It works the same way and it's yeah. cheaper. Is um Mumbai Polygon Mumbai yeah. or um, yeah. even the well, I wouldn't say ZK EVM because that actually uses Guerli as its currency. Oh uh, no, screw that. Weird. No. no, screw that. But um. Use Polygon Mumbai for testing as well. It's, it's yeah. really good. It's it's fast and you'll be able to test the code the same way as you would on a, a regular yeah. Ethereum testnet. Yeah, that's my suggestion to you. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so we got the texture here. So what would also... Would, so do we need to define those three different textures in that case? Yeah, because it's interesting how it's wrapping it on the other side. I think that's just how it works. Because it, it cause texture is like the map on all the sides. So that's kind of why it's doing that. But I ah. think as, as we add more textures, it should be okay. As we, yeah, look, so look, we can, see this is how, you see how it looks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think... Oh, look, you can actually build the game with 3GS, bro! Oh! Dude, you could build game, you could build anything with 3GS, basically, at this point. That's, it's insane. Can we watch a video within the YouTube video? Like, like, can I stream this while watching the YouTube video? Why not, right? You're going to do it, yeah. So here he is. Oh, he's he's actually using this specific one. You see? That's hilarious. He's using that card. Look at nice. that. So he's actually using any card textures. Yeah. Then he's building the track. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Okay. Wow. He's actually yeah, creating a lot circles. Of do it. Dude, this yeah. is this is this is this is geometry to the next level. This is where oh. I think college geometry is so helpful. <laughs> I know. It, uh, one of the resources like Bruno recommends is Khan Academy because of the algebra and trig stuff. Because yeah. there's a lot of trigonometry and like some math that Dude, you and I do. I have very to go relearn. Things. I have to go relearn trigonometry again. Uh huh. I took fucking AP Calc and stuff, and I forget like half of it. Like I need to like refresh my brain on all this, so, so all that stuff I thought I didn't need. Yeah. So let's see how far. So this this just goes in a straight line, I'm guessing, right? Mm hmm. That is crazy. Oh, does he handle collision detection? 
Um, I don't know. That is interesting. So I think I don't think that does it actually like hit detection. Hold on. Oh yeah, he does have hit, hit detection. That's cool. That was pretty sick. Yeah, we could build some advanced stuff. I'm looking into like learning how to create a like a physics based game with 3GS. We could do some really cool physics stuff where we actually add gravity and things like that to a 3GS world to make it even more realistic. Mm, okay. So right now, so, I'm so anyway, so we got the front one, we got the back texture. So how do we define it on both? How do we define it separately on the front and the back? So let's see here. So car front, car back. Like forget the side for now. Uh huh. So it looks like he defines it in a. I have to do some research on this because I I haven't tried uh, layering multiple materials on a single uh, mesh. So this is like new to me as oh, well. Oh, so look, this is front, back, top. Bottom, left, right. Because mm -hmm, those textures have the white background behind the windows. So we don't need to specify a color. Only for the top and bottom since those aren't yeah. going to have a, yeah. a window. Yeah. Which makes a lot of sense. So what we can do is... So the back texture, I believe, uses the same function. So get car front. It should be called get car front and back texture. But I think that's fine for now. So what we're going to do in the code is we're going to change up this mesh a little bit i don't know if they could see it but um yeah let's change the mesh here so yeah i'm gonna go back to here so we have this car get yeah. car fronts you want to change this so, mesh right here so we're gonna copy it again and we're gonna define another mesh uh lambert material this is crazy Mil but you would do you would do inside materials. here so you would do inside here right so you do you go like this yeah like that of course you want to be yeah clean, there we go but... so that goes top and bottom Oh, <laughs> look, 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 look. <laughs> nice. So it's just gone. That. And then it's the next two, I believe, are the top and bottoms, which is just, a, it uses a Lambert material, but it specifies a color. So if you, you can yeah, paste so that needs, to, I'm going to put, put it. Oh, nice. look at that. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. Okay. And then we need to get the left and the right, but we don't have a left and right function though. Or is, do we have that? Yeah. So we have to define that. So see right here? Ah, car side texture. So we did front. Ah, mm. and then there's this car side. Okay, so you want to you wanna do you wanna go ahead and do that? Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get the function set up. I'm going to put it right under the get car front texture. I'm mm -hmm. it. Or we could just keep using the regular function. Yeah, uh, let's just function, use the regular function for now. Car side texture. Well, I need to look at the canvas textures because most of the textures I've used with are just already defined textures by designers where you just literally just map it and you don't have to do like the multiple materials. It does like yeah. everything. But yeah. this is another unique, cool way of doing that. I, I really like this. Okay, so we got that. And let me go back to the code over here. So I'll just grab it and then we can go through the code. So it's going to be similar. We just create the canvas yeah it's gonna be of course the width is gonna be longer because we're defining the side of the car the height's the same which makes sense. ah so the side is depending on what what the width of the side it actually is okay yeah and then context so we're it looks weird because it looks like dot fill style it looks like we're resetting the color uh, here i that, get it now bro okay i get it now yeah. okay look so what happens is that we have like okay so i get it so basically what we're doing here is that we do, we're defining this width height correct yeah, and this exactly. Is, this is all white, and then the gray is. This is why this ten eight makes sense. Correct. Ten so eight is x y position, so this is going to be ten yeah, eight. Yeah, exactly. Like around here, and, mm -hmm. um, I don't still don't know what thirty ten. Oh, that's ten eight that's is x width. and y position. That's okay, the yeah, width. So, so width with thirty eight. Height. Yeah, width and then height. That's that's what those are. So ten so eight is x y. Yeah. Thirty eight is the width, and then twenty four is the yes. height. So fill rect is fill rect is actually creating a separate rectangle that utilizes that fill style. Mm -hmm. The next one it changes the fill style, and then it applies that fill style to the um, rectangle. 
Well, that fill style isn't changing that entire background. It's just defining yeah. what that color is going to be applied to when we define shapes and stuff. And this eight is the top. Is like this. This is eight right here. So this right here, this part is eight, right? Yeah. So that's the Y position. That's the Y position yeah. from top. Yeah, and it makes sense that it's the same for both the rectangles because we want them to have the same Y yeah. level. Yeah. And then this right here is ten. And then this right here is fifty-eight. Exactly. Ah, yeah. my man. Mm. In the front. Mm -hmm. The back. Yeah, one's you can add a these longer. textures to, as a separate one. That's so crazy. You can add them as separate. Wow. Right. Yeah. So this is layering materials, which is which is true. You can layer multiple materials onto a single geometry. Yeah. Which uh, it's interesting to look into because I wonder how that means if you can use different materials and how the light will affect it. So like you have one material, but you don't. Want one part there it's just just so much around the brain around but it's just it's sweet it's pretty cool so okay makes sense get on, get on we could start actually adding on the uh side texture so let's do car right side texture yeah so we do car right side texture car left side texture all right yeah exactly and the left side is going to use the same side texture so get car side texture and then it looks mm -hmm. like left side is going to it uses the same one but the function makes it work only on the right side so we got to do some extra stuff to flip that's the it only part to the understand side. is what oh so it's, it's flipping it so the center what okay so vector two so this is defining a point on the on the left texture and we're going to rotate it on that point so it stays center when you rotate it because initially, like how it works is when you do rotation, it rotates on the top left of it, which yeah. it's not. Oh, it's so center is going to be the center of it, basically, correct? Yeah, yeah. And why is the rotation math dot pi, though, is the question. Okay, so how rotation works is rotation. So rotation takes in an, a, what's called radi radians, which it takes in a, a number and a specific like degree value. And we're uh -huh. math dot pi is gonna do a full 180 degrees, which is what we want. We want it to flip it to the other side. Well, why don't they just say 180 then? That's so weird. Because it rotation, it doesn't take in a degree value. It takes it in. Uh, ah, I remember now. Pi, pi. Hold on, hold on. Geometry, pi, and geometry. Hold on. Oh my god. Two degrees, it, it, bro. It. Oh my, oh, look for the love. It's 180. <laughs> yeah. Because you're flipping it like to the other side. No, no, like I, I get it. I get it. I was just, what I, it, right? what I did not get is, it's just, I'm starting to come back because I mean, are you, you know, it's just starting to come back to me, like geometry, and, you know, starting to come back to me in terms of knowledge. Yeah. Um, so, of course, right. they take in right. radiance. So, radiance is like pi is 3.142. That's the radian number that, uh, yeah. that exists in this. And so, 3.142 is 180 degrees exactly. Um, yeah. That's why they use math dot pi. Yeah. That makes sense. So, you cannot use 180 it's degrees. You have to use radiance, which <laughs> that's what pi it's is it, for. It's fucking, it's crazy. Dude, I'm going, back to, I'm going back to high school, bro. Let's go. Me too, because I took honors geometry trig, so I did like all the crazy shit, and then I did calc. So I'm like, this sits flooding Dude, back did, to me when I didn't think it I ever know. would. <laughs> I did too. Like I took the calculus yeah. stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, this is bringing me back to all this stuff. Uh, I love it. But now we're I just copied it. We're just gonna add in the text. Car right, right side, and then we've got. I think we got the comma here. There we go. Was oh, there a comma? I forgot. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Bam. There we go. Oh yeah. Damn. That is Did sick. They... And we could probably add in one extra feature if we want to make it so that we can actually rotate and see the and rotate around the car. We could oh, use yeah. How do we do the how can we rotate around the car? That's the interesting part. That's I was gonna ask so, that question. Yeah, so it's something called orbit controls, which isn't a part of the official 3GS um package, but it's a part of something called examples, and I'll show it to you. So orbit controls. Orbit. Let's see. Orbit controls. Yeah. So, so here they said they. So here they said we created textures with HTML canvas, 
HTML canvas is capable of much more than what we used what we use uh, what we use here. We can draw different shapes with curves and arcs, but then again, and sometimes minimal design is all that we need. Yeah. Yeah, you could do so much with it. It's pretty insane. Wowza. Wowza. Love it, love it. But um let me see in the code. Wow, cool. Love it. I know it's it. it's pretty sick. It's 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 really sick. So I believe if we go back to the top, we have to import orbit control separately at the top. It's a part of so 3GS. Import. Yeah. And then you put the brackets and then inside it you're gonna put orbit controls. Uh-huh. I'm trying to remember the exact path it's in, but I believe it's three slash examples. So it's not directly in the index or like however they export all of them in a single file, it's not a part of it, but it's in so a I need to file. I think oh it's 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 separately. Yeah. I let me see, make sure because I know uh let's see. Mm, let's orbit. see here. Import. If I forget the import for orbit controls um import. 3GS. It should show the exact import. Ah, uh, I can also do with this right here. Look. Mm, it's like, not. I know it's not part of the 3GS. Ah, uh, oh, it's a sub module. So. I have to. I, oh, dude, we actually have to no. install it. Look. No. You have, no. You, you you'd be surprised. You don't have to. You don't have to install a separate one. No. I can. I can show you. Um. Ah, uh, examples. The, JSM controls. That's, over controls. Yeah, that one exactly. Uh, but I that's think the, the, do you have to specify that it's a node modules thingy? No, not at all. So you shouldn't have to do that at all. You should do the three JS examples. Basically everything. You don't have to. Yeah, let me show you. I'll do JS and then we do over control. So I, I can copy it for you if you want here. Go ahead. So like that. So I was I was on it. I just forgot it was there's was another folder. Boom. Wait, no. Shit. Boom. Okay. Boom. There Sick. we go. There we go. You see, it's not giving us error, so we're good. Yeah. So all we have to do now is we can define it. Let's say right here at the top of the file, just like that. Or no, we do need the camera. All right. I forgot yeah. The part so we'll go under the camera um, function. So we'll do const controls equals new orbit controls. Just pass okay. in a camera. And then it needs a DOM. Does it wait? Does it need a canvas? I believe it needs a canvas. I mean, like, here, let's see here. So, yeah, camera and a rendered oh. DOM element. So, we'll have to move this down one more. We'll move it right here. And then we'll do render. Is it just a renderer? I think the renderer yeah. dot, el dot DOM element. DOM element, which is good, which is what we want. And then we got to add the controls to the scene, I believe. So you do. Uh, so that happens on the bottom, I believe, right? Yeah, scene dot add. So on the so on the bottom, so on line twenty one, twenty one, we do scene dot add, right? And I say controls here, like so. Are we? Let's see. I just add it at the bottom. Wait, let me see. You add it at the bottom. Let's save it. Okay, we go back to the file just to check really quick. So mm -hmm. I, there's one more, there's one more step. So if you go back to 3JS or to that, um, to that, uh, tab you're at. Uh, this we'll, tab? we'll fix that right now. Yeah. This that tab? One. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Orbit controls. Okay. So new controls. Oh wait, maybe we don't have to do that. I just seen something. Okay, cool. I know exactly what we need to do. So we don't actually have to add it to the scene. So we just actually remove that where uh, we define scene add controls. And there's something else. So what we actually have to do is we have to put it inside the animate function, I believe. So like, which so channel do we have that one? Because we just, we just simply have the controls here. Yeah. But wait, I see that we have render. We have rendering of tw we have render twice. Do we? Let's remove it. 
maybe that's we have one to twice. We have one at the top and one at the bottom. I, I'm looking at it right now. Remove the one from the top. Yeah, we don't need the one at the top. Yeah. Okay, and then what we have to do is under here. So we're do function. So at the very bottom, in order for the orbit controls to be able to like be able to allow us to spin, uh -huh. we have to update the we have to update the controls on every frame because when we change its position, we need to be able to re-render that change. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So animate, and then we'll do request animation frame. Yeah, but you've we'll done pass. before. So it's controls dot update. And then what we we can actually put the render in there just so if we ever add animation we could just be able to do it like that and then bam. and then no now uh, Ali, right now we're just right now so he's like hey i thought you guys were using a react 3 fiber no right now we're just oh. learning how just simply how to build like a 3js um very simple 3js site or 3js objects and that's the goal yeah. right now pretty much for us yeah and but actually react 3 fiber will make this like 10 times like 20 times more simpler really oh it's way it's so much more easier with react 3 fiber i love it and they have a bunch of libraries uh-huh it's so good so is the this top one right one, here react 3 fiber is it yeah is it from here is it pum, pum, what the hell is this yep. pumunders pum, i don't know how to say it but they're a collective of developers who've created react 3 fiber they created rack spring or they maintain react spring They's, they've also created some like top notch like state management libraries for React. Oh, that's um, sick! So we can actually do some cool stuff with this. So th oh, that's the one from 3GS um, Journey, dude. Really, from this one? So he yes. uses 3GS three three uh, fiber, right? At, for his website, for the main 3GS Journey website, he uses I think just regular three three uh, vanilla three. Yeah. yeah, just just vanilla. I think he actually uses PHP for the site, which is pretty funny but um, what no i, I this one right so. here is peach cannot no, be no not that one the 3gs journey website ah uh, i see the website for the course i think he uses php where he actually renders in some like those 3d models but um react 3 fiber simplifies it so much with all the stuff to do under the hood it's good doing it vanilla oh it really bro look look, look 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 bro yeah that's what i'm saying look it works now oh let's go damn it's i need to, we, we need to put this box level lower i think yeah it's just because the texture is cutting some of it off because i don't know if they accounted for some of the height in the texture we could probably increase the height and texture but we oh we can also uh, increase the height oh we no oh i say i know why we need to increase the height of this one so we need to we need to increase the or, height of the vertical one let me see here or you could lower the cabin if you don't want to raise yeah. the height of the main car yeah, I'm saying like either either lower the cabin or or make this the green one higher. Yeah, yeah. So, so whichever one, pretty much. Let me see here. Main. Let me try this here. So main mesh, position Y ten. So fifteen. Um, there we you go. Could use the vanilla, but yeah, you can do it that, or you could if you don't want it to be too low, you can just increase it a bit. Bam, looks good. There you go. Bro, we built the car. That's sick. Yeah, <laughs> orbit controls reveals a little bit more, but it, it's it's still pretty awesome. You could like actually be able to see everything, and you could wow. limit. You could also limit the orbit controls for how much you can rotate specific directions. So if you don't want to rotate too far one way, you can yeah, limit yeah. that. That's but, so um, cool. Yeah. So all we did the, in the orbit control section is you, ah, uh, and you update the controls every single time. There's an animate. Function. Yes. Ah, I see. I see. I see. Because in order to see it move, which it m manipulates, I believe, the camera, mm -hmm. it's just like a geometry to see it constantly rotate. When you animate, you have to pass it into the animate loop in order to see it actually be moved. Mm, interesting. This is really cool. This is really cool. I like this. It probably would be better to put that update before the render. Because I feel like the render dot render. I feel like I just feel more comfortable with it always being at the bottom, but yeah, yeah, no, that, that makes sense to me though. Yeah, let me see refresh. But yeah, there we go. Yeah, there Sick. we go. And Code Sandbox has been, and and Code Sandbox has been doing a great job for us too here. So yeah, it's not, it's only not weird thing well. is the kicking out thing, but other than that though, it's been it's been awesome using this. Yeah, yeah.
But yeah, this is just one like little thing. Only that part I don't understand still to this. this is, the only part I still don't understand this part. Like this orthographic camera divided by negative two. I don't know what that really means. Okay, so camera width 150 divided by like camera two. width. Yeah. I understand that. So I know camera width is 150. Camera height okay. is camera width divided by aspect ratio. Okay, that makes sense. So that it basically we can see 75 units to the left is what that's doing. So it's negative 75. Mm -hmm. So we can see negative 75 units to the left. And then the next one is we can see 75 units to the right. Ah, so from, from the center, negative 75 yes. plus 75. Exactly. Top, and then top is plus 75. Ah, so if we do, okay, I see. So if we don't do this, so you're saying that if I don't do this, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to. That mu that's going to make it bigger, I believe, unless it's giving Let's you see. errors. It doesn't even show. Change the one for the right. Wow. I wonder, so maybe divided by a bigger value. I want to see how that changes it, like by three. three or something. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What the hell? <laughs> it just flattened it. You know what's a cool thing um, if, to visualize it more? It's kind of like the access helper. I know they have camera helpers that help you visualize how that camera is looking based on the parameters we specified which we can definitely do like more deep dives on like later for sure because we could do, do so much with wow. these different kinds of cameras but well, there yeah. you go this is cool That's there you go there is your 3js uh car <laughs> <laughs> all right uh dude on next one we should cool. on, on the next one we should do this even more um more complicated i think no we should try that um that car one the one the guy was this building. one this one? The one, yeah, the like the actual one on the racetrack. I think that. Oh be yeah, fun. that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I think we could do it tomorrow. Yeah, That'd be for so sure. much fun. We could. That would be a lot of fun. Get back into like the trig stuff and see how we can. I want to know how he builds the racetrack. If he uses like. Um, I think he just uses normal geometry. I don't see like I think. Let's see here. Uh, canvas. Yeah, I think he just uses normal canvas. Look, see that in the top. Like width, height, 2D, fill style, and he just creates a circle, you know? This is perfect. Cause An arc. I, uh, yeah, I think we should do this one for sure. Okay. Tomorrow. Who is this That'd guy? That'd be a lot Let's of fun. See. Who is this guy? Ah, oh, we can give him some love. Let's go. Oh, this one has, this. Good. he got like 61k views. Let's go. Two years ago. Beautiful. I don't think that yeah. I don't think I don't I don't think it's illegal for us to actually watch this video as we're actually live streaming. I think it's actually okay. Yeah, we're just we're hey we're promoting him and we're just kind of building what he's building. So I think yeah. this is great. This looks awesome, sick, awesome guys. If you guys have any questions for us or if you guys have suggestions on what else should we we should be doing, we're gonna come back live tomorrow as well. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Just, again, the point of all this is just for us to learn, for you to learn, and for you to come on with the journey with us. That's the whole goal of this, basically, code with me section, okay? Um, On that, that's it. Yeah. Daniel? Yep. You enjoyed it? This is awesome. Oh, yeah. love it. Love it. And yeah, I was just reading the, com the comment you were reading about Reactor Fiber, which the guy says it's a 3DS yeah. renderer for Reactor DS, which he's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Cool. Uh, awesome, guys. Nice. All right, guys. Nice. You have yourself a great day. Woo! Oh, yeah, man. We're going to continue on and hope you guys oh, have yeah. a good Yeah, a good day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Okay, okay bye, guys. Nice. That's sick.